Hello. Is this once again the silent treatment? Yes. Hello. Oh, hi. Welcome. Hi. Buenvenidos. It's time for what time is it? What sir? time is it for the beer googles? No, these the other words. It's all uh, words I don't understand. Uh, Buenvenidos de Google de cerveza. Yay! All right. Google es de cervezas, everybody. <laughs> that is beautiful. How are you doing? Sir? Yes, muy bien. How goes? Super. Double E. Double O. Double G. How are you doing on this fine Sunday afternoon? I'm having a good time. We kind of got weird football in the background. Weird football. And then we've got like, you know, that's just how it works. Weird As football. L- you know. I don't know. Is all football say. weird? No. Uh, no, only some football. Only are weird. some football. Like yeah. football soccer or football American with the helmets? Well, a, no, a lot of football is weird. Oh, okay. Like the fakies. The fakies? Yeah, it's like. You know the feel. Oh, I, I kicked the shins. Oh, oh, oh boy. Shit. Oh, that hurt. Oh boy. Oh, honey baby. Oh boy. So, um, before we begin, because yes. we usually do it at the end, but could you please, hello, Twitter world, can you do us a favor and please listen? Yeah. I, I, okay. Listen. And then what? Rate. Oh, review. Uh, I'm you paying sorry. Attention? Fuck. Hello, Christopher. I, I'm not, we knew... I didn't know what we were doing. Part of our banter is that we knew each other so long, we just play off each other because we didn't, get each please other. Please listen. I was like, listen to what? I didn't get it, dude. All right. Sorry. I'm very disappointed in you. Okay, sorry. so rate, review, comment, subscribe. Comment, subscribe, please. The please, pod we means. Need... Yes. We, we're, we're, we're the having iTunes, fun with it. the yeah. Spotify's. And we're grateful. Thank you for listening, also. Yes. For those who listen and have rated and reviewed us, and found us wanting or whatever in Muchas Nightsdale. gracias. Thank you very much for measuring and weighing us. All that shit. As needed. Yes. But today we're going to talk about some weird shit. Hell yeah. Because I know we're arrears. All of the arrears. We're always in arrears. But <laughs> about a month ago, well, today is also Sunday, November 29th, 2020. But uh, about a month ago, we uh, did Celebrity Superstitions and it yeah. just released. Didn't we just drop that one on Friday? Yeah. And that's a weird one. Heidi Klum's own baby teeth. That's fucked up, bro. You're in everywhere. You're in <sighs> trouble now. There was pee everywhere. Oh, yeah, we did man. have a lot of peas. I forgot about Remember, the pee train. Remember, you even suspended the pee train. You we suspended did. pee fines. Yes, we did. Um, but please, uh, what are we talking about today? Today, something once again near and dear to my heart the origins of superstitions. All right. For Super some excited, bro. I am. I, I think love this fun. stupid shit. Cause I'm weird. What up? So let's do it. Let's yes. let's get right into this. Cause yes. you know, it's all, we only have 18 of them. So it, it only can take like five hours. 2.1 hours. <laughs> I don't think we'll get that. Yes. Far. I'm going to take the under my friend <sighs> as much as I don't want to. Cause I love talking with you. I love having, hanging out, just chatting, sitting here, drinking from our check mugs. <laughs> check mugs. Our check mugs are being drinked, drinked right there. <laughs> um, anyway, so we have eighteen, correct? Uh, eighteen. Right now, we we no, might no, add no, 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 nineteen. No, 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 eighteen. Right. Nine, 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 nine. No, eighteen. No, no, eighteen. Well, we say nine, 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 because that's no for German. It's oh, German for no. so sorry. So we'll say nine, 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 eighteen. Yes. So it'll be no, 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 eighteen. Yes. Excellent. Here we go. Um, number one, sir. Irrational as they may be, we all have a superstition or two. Whether it's a lucky pair of pants. Or an aversion to Friday the 13th. Superstitions are important to us because they give us meaning to the often random nature of luck. Often. Often. Wow. Often. Often did. And put us in the driving seat of our own destiny. Dun, 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 dun. We are now going to run through super surprising cultural histories behind some of the world's most common supernatural beliefs. I love it. Start, man. So go. Oh. We don't have a drum roll. Ah, shit. I have a rim shot. Whoa. You know. Of course you do. Mm. You know. I'm not, not going to talk about that. All right. Number one, bro. In the bedroom, sir. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven. No, knocking on wood. Housekeeping? Oh, we should have got. We should have like added misophonia sounds. I should, I should have downloaded some, <laughs> some of these. Yes. What does, what, does the, what does the next one? Oh, never mind. doesn't matter. Knocking on wood, sir. Uh... Any list of superstitions would have to begin with arguably the most well-known and universal superstition to knock on wood. The actual origins and even meanings of the phrase are as varied 
as the cultures which use it, which some suggest roots in the Indo-European or Celtic beliefs that spirits, good and bad, resided in trees. No shit. Who knew that? Who could be... I certainly didn't. I, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> they resided in trees who could be either called upon for protection or chased away by knocking on their home. And others, specifically Christians, linking the practice to the magical power of the wooden crucifix. Most likely among the different theories, historians have attributed the superstition to a 19th century British child's game called Tiggy Touchwood. What the fuck? Bro, you're the one reading verbatim. Uh, In which young players claimed immunity (laughs) from being tagged by touching the nearest piece of wood. (laughs) But, but not in your pants. Adults picked up on the habit and the phrase. <laughs> the British still say touch wood today. <laughs> and the rest is history, bro. Did Priest start saying it? Uh, as with many superstitions, there are subtle variations and sometimes not so subtle varying origins. Italians say touch steel rather than wood. Perhaps more related to iron horseshoes. Poles, Russians touch unpainted wood. Turks knock twice. Latin Americans knock on wood with no legs, i.e. chairs. How about that shit? We all got weird crap, bro. That is weird. You better knock on wood. Baby. That's all you got? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Um, I have a bone to pick with you. Please. You are so gracious. I, I am. Before we continue, you were so gracious in gifting me a strawberry uncrustable. I am. Last week? I did. Bro. Hold it up. Boom. <coughs> Suckers. Hashtag uncrustables. I wanted an uncrimpable, god damn it. Uncrimpable. And you got me crimps. Crimps does crimps are as bad as crusts. Crimps and crusts are a hard edge to a finiteness to which I will not subject myself. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. They're not uncrimpables, is all I'm saying. They're uncrustables. Right. But the crimp and the crust, very similar texture to me. So would you eat another one? Fuck yeah, they're delicious. You're but... dumb dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that they're un- they're not uncrimpables. Well, that's they're they're not called uncrimpables. I know that, but the crimp and the crust have the same kind of oh, now I get crunchiness, you. like a te- almost like an okay. A, the texture of the crimp is the similar to is a crust. similar to the crust, so it's not that. Bad, but the strawberry. To your point, the strawberry that is rare in your estimation. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard get. Yeah, delicious, fantastical. You're similar to a jackass. I think I am a jackass. <laughs> I don't think I'm. There's no like or as. I'm not a simile. Not a nor simile. Me- metaphor. Are you ready for my uh, first? Fuck one, yeah, no. Well, I'm sorry about the uncrimpables. Yeah, we're not over them yet. No, no, I'm I'm I I'm th- I'm grateful. Thank you for sharing that with me. They are delicious. Are you going to go buy some? I don't they have to be really bad for you, don't they? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I can't imagine There's them all being, kinds of carcinogens yeah. and shit. How many uh, may I just ask could you not that you have to count each one, but how many ingredients do you read? Like 30, 40? Uh, it's not like bread. It's not like flour, water, peanut peanuts. No, there's probably like 12. That's not the worst, but it's kind of a small thing to have 12 ingredients. And it's just PB and J on bread. Niacin. Oh, niacin. Furious good. sulfate. Oh, yeah. Thiamine mm. monohydrate. Mm, riboflamin. Oh, riboflamin. Folic my acid. Folic, yeah. That's good. Yeast, soybean oil. Women, I think folic acid. Anyway. Conditioners. Oh, yeast no, oil? Sorry. What kind of oil? Dough conditioners. Is that yeast? Distilled mono and diglycerides. Fucking Jesus, this sounds delicious. <laughs> Datium, <laughs> enzymes, 
azorbic acid and calcium peroxide. Calcium peroxide, that's really bad for you, right? I don't think any of that shit's good for you, my friend. In the peanut butter, there's peanut sugar, molasses, fully hydrated vegetable oil, as opposed to partially hydrated vegetable oil. Uh, see, I'm, that does not make me feel better. Rapeseed and soybean, mono and diglycerides, salt. In the jam, there's sugar, strawberries, pectid, citric acid, and other stuff I can't read. So we're done with that shit. Well, that's just great. Thank you for sharing. We're all going to die. <laughs> we're all, we're all going to die, man. <laughs> anyway. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing it with me regardless because it was delicious. Yeah, it's the one time. I don't, you know, there you don't eat them every day like McDonald's. It will get me hooked. It, it was it was really good. I'm not going to lie. I, yeah, you just I have like them like when you're in a pinch, like a road trip, boom, grab one. You know what I mean? You know, I feel how many a, of these do you eat? It feels like you eat more than just in a pinch. No, it I take like them, them only on the golf course. That's it. And here. Oh, fuck. That's twice. Oh, shit. I just doubled my number of uncrimpables. You went from 2 to 4%, I went, sir. I went from... I doubled my 50%, bro. That's 100%, bro. That's 100%. Oh, shit. You're, How did you do Not that? only are you eating uncrimpables... I don't even know what's going on here. What's going on? It's uh, not working. Not only did I double my uncrimpables, but uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, bro, uh, <sighs> you have you doubled your need for the uncrimpables. You went from 2 to 4%. Uh, uh, 50%. What? Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's dough, whoa. I, I, Mark, yeah, yeah, yeah. check Mark, don't know how to do the TV. He's I, being. I'm having TV difficulties, and I don't understand what's it going no on. Thing, it says no signal. Yeah, but it has a signal. It's, duh. Uh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My first one. Yes. Drum roll not. Sans drum roll is throwing salt over your shoulder. And this is one you like to do all the time, isn't it? That way. And it's got to be the left side, too. Uh, Perhaps the next most common superstition, at least in the West, involves tossing salt over and shoulder. Like knocking on wood, the superstition also involved the, involved the idea of warding off evil. In this case, the devil himself. Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, Jesus' portrayer, Betrayer Judas Iscariot is portrayed as having accidentally spilled salt. Wow. Since Judas was associated with doing something bad, the argument goes that ipso facto, I love that shit, ipso facto, so is salt, and throwing it over your shoulder would blind the devil waiting oh, there. Oh, how about that? Oh, that's smart. I wouldn't know is that or just to undo it kind of thing. Since in other versions of the superstitions, old scratch was thought to reside just over your left shoulder, ready to tempt you, the salt was thrown to the left. Is it, is it always like, fucker, fucker brains out? <laughs> For shame, Lawrence. Is it on the left shoulder? Is it a good guy on the left shoulder? Uh, I don't know. Did I have to, I'd, I'd, have, to check, I'd have to check I'd that. have to watch Animal House again. Oh, it's okay. the one. Oh, no. Left shoulder has to be the devil because it's, it's, let her go, Lawrence. He's like, fucker, fucker brains out. <laughs> For shame. I think it's correct. Yeah, I think the bad guy's on your left shoulder. That would make sense. And that would make sense that Animal House would have portrayed it so accurately. Who would have thunk that Animal House is a historical document? Me. <laughs> Senator Blutowski. <laughs> Blutowski. Uh, Please raise your right hand. He's as, co as he's as competent as anyone else elected. I, I concur, sir. Okay. Um, anyway, so the salt was thrown to the left. Because that le old scratch was over your left shoulder. Still others say sheer value of the salt alone in ancient times led to the belief that spill to spill was to incur bad fortune. Like among Romans, requiring corresponding ritual act of penance to prevent worse loss from occurring. It must have been fucking expensive then, salt. But anyway, that's that one, my friend. Yeah. I'm going to try to make this... Uh, Hi. Was that a selfie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's adorable. Ah. ah. <laughs> uh, we're taking we're pictures. We're stupid. And, yeah, Sorry. we're having fun. Distracted. But uh, once again, you are listening to another episode of the Beer Girls. Hey, did we even say we're from where we're broadcasting? The fucking treehouse, bro. 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 Broadcasting live. From the treehouse. From the treehouse. From the headquarters in Gilbert. Again? Yes. But, uh, yeah. Too we're doing, super, doing superstitions. Because, like, we talked about celebrity ones about a month ago, and now we're having fun with these. Yeah. Yeah. Because that shit's interesting to me, bro. I like historical shits. 
Me Tambian. You Tambian? Yes. All right. Are you ready for number three, bro? Uh, okay. Good answer. Walking yes. under a ladder. The superstition of not wanting to walk under a ladder also has roots in Christian symbolism. 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 The Holy Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit led to an association of the number three with something sacred. The triangle with its three sides came to be regarded as sacred as well. And the ladder of course forms a triangle. So naturally to walk under the ladder would be just destroy the sanctity of the Trinity and thus incur punishment, bitches. That goddamn Trinity gets in the way every fucking time. It's the worst, huh? It's well, it's I guess it's better than the by, by, by G. The latter's resemblance to a gallows also didn't help matters, nor did the fact of the obvious danger of something falling from it. <laughs> yeah, like, like a piano. <laughs> like a piano in a New York City yes. sidewalk. Finally, the Egyptians apparently thought that one might accidentally spot a god going up or down on a ladder and so avoided it. Must have made building all those tall pyramids very difficult. Ha ha ha. That was terrible. Oh, the aliens did it. So. That totally Aryans. Yeah, well, where's my tinfoil? Oh, it's over there. Oh, shit. It's out of reach, too. Oh, no. I must keep the tinfoil within reach at all times. You should, because I almost used it last well, time. Well, they're trying to scan our brains, bro. All the brains, you, bro. I don't know if you know this, but they're trying. 5G? Who's, it, who's scanning? 5G's over. It's already over. It's already done? It's who's already scanning done. our brains? The aliens, The aliens, man. okay. The ones who built the pyramids. Okay, but, fuck, sorry. But it's a conspiracy. They're not talking about it. Okay. Yeah, we need to talk with someone. Okay. We need to talk to a Commodore of some sorts. Oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we got Broken Mirror, man. Yes, we do. Broken Mirror. What happens when you break a mirror? A alleg- regery. A regery. You have a son of seven years of bad luck. Kim Jong-un, right? A regery. Sure. Rory, so I'm so lonely. lonely. I broke a mirror in Why my bed. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? <laughs> but maybe, just maybe, just maybe, sitting on my little throne. Throne. I maybe, I'm smart and I'm beautiful, physically fit. <laughs> but nobody else seems to realize it or give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> those guys are genius. Yeah. Okay, so Broken Mirror, seven years, right? The belief that Broken Mirror brings bad luck most likely has its origins in the simple fact that reflections of ourselves are uncanny and often unnerving, particularly on a bad hair day. It's not funny. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Or a non-hair day. Yeah. Fuck off. So humans have long had associations with that, or had bad associations with them. Take, for example, Greek myth of Narcissus, or the idea that a crack in a mirror would somehow break it, break its charm or trap one's soul. It was the ancient Romans, however, who contributed to the notion that a broken mirror would bring seven years of bad luck, since it was believed that only poor health could co- would cause a mirror to crack, and the number seven was seen by the Romans as the number of years required to complete a full life cycle of sickness and renewal. How about that? Who th- I kn- well, shit. Who thought this was a history program? I tell you what. I mean, just I mean, obviously the origins would be history, but this is like real Roman history. You had a seven-year itch cycle. I guess. I wonder if that's a seven-year itch as well, because you have every seven years, right? How about that? Sickness and renewal. I like you. Just what do you uh, recycle yourself every seven? Yeah, years? like a snake shedding its skin, but different. Interesting. No, I, res- I think that's. I think you're right. Oh no, I just as a result. Up. <laughs> As a result, a broken mirror meant you were headed toward a death spiral that might take seven years to pull yourself out of. But then those same Romans felt you could prevent that horrible outcome by gathering the broken pieces of the mirror and burying them by moonlight. Ooh. So should we really trust them about the bad luck stuff? Probably not. Nope. Bury them by moonlight. Arr, arr, arr. Wear mirrors? I don't think so. You sure? I, I don't know, bro. You're, well, you're not sure? I, I'm all... No. Okay. But I'm sure you, you need to do something. I do? I think so. I do. I did. Yay, me. I'm a technical analyst junior, too, and stuff. I can push the buttons. Number five. 
Step on a crack, step on a crack, break your mother's back. I don't know how to speak. Thank you so much. I, I thought you were going to break a bake. And I'm like, how do you break a bake <laughs> after you step on a crack? A superstition involving something cracked or broken being associated with bad luck is a superstition stepping on a crack as foretelling or even causing harm to a family member. As with mirrors, cracks in the earth on a sidewalk or almost anywhere have long been seen as portals to the realm of the supernatural for both good and ill. To step on those cracks might be to invite or release unwelcome spirits into the world ready to do one harm. Wow. Whoa, man. Is there anything to add to uh, that or is that all of it? Words. Other more words. words. That's it, bro. That's it. As Finny. Step on a crack, break your mama's bake. Is that kind of like Devo, but different? Yeah, I guess crack, mirrors, crack, and stepping on cracks. Oh, that's, uh, what do you call it? No, that was um, Whip It Good. That was Whip It. Sorry, I was way off. Yeah, but no, it's step on a crack, break your mama's back. Na, 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 na. You, you must whip it. it. It was Whip It. Okay, It was sorry. Devo. So it was the upside down planters on their head. The yes. Pot, potted plants on their head. They were all into Step the... pyramids, bro. Whoa. On their heads. They were Whoa. Mayans. Oh my gosh! Whoa, Divas. I think they were aliens. Oh shit! Are we back on the alien? Well, maybe they were. Maybe they were wearing those red planters to protect their mm-hmm. brains. They were protecting the brains, bro, from the scanning. Oh, I but the do you 80s think they were scanning. aluminum lined. Yeah, maybe, shiny exactly, side inside. Exactly. Only shiny side inside. Exactly. Okay. Well, I think we can see. Move. What I'm saying. Devo was ahead of Give their me time. Xanax, man. Give uh, me some prescription drugs. Okay. Because right now, yes. I'm I'm, I'm gonna get very you anxious about hooked, aliens, bro. Please do. I I mean, please don't. That would be awful. The next one, sir. Another superstition? Yeah. Lucky penny. Whoa. What do you know about lucky pennies? I know I don't have any. Yeah, but what's what when you find one, what what isn't aren't there some criteria whether you take it or not? No, uh, I don't know. The, you don't know? Come on, you remember. Uh, As a kid? Uh, you remember. I don't remember. <laughs> uh do you have weasel face? I do. Dang, you know, you can only pick it up with the head up, right? Oh, I didn't know that. You never... Is that where Heads Up, Seven Up came from? No, it's Seven Up Yours. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, that's Make Seven Up Yours. No, this was, yeah, if, if it's Penny, you have to, you can only pick it up if it's Heads I Up. I wasn't it's aware lucky. of that. Wow. You you seem like a guy who understood these things like Tom Fullery and... Um, I don't even like Tom. I know, but, you know, the, the old-timey words... Uh, I think sure. like you know a penny, a lucky penny. I, uh, I, I wasn't aware it had to be face. How about that? Well, the idea that finding a penny would bring good luck also originates in folk beliefs. Folks. In, in this case, based on the idea that metal, regarded by many ancient cultures as quite valuable, was sent by the gods to protect those whom they favored. Pennies being made from metal, find them and you'll have good fortune. But be careful. Someday the luck could break either way. And if that if you find a penny tails up, you should turn it over and leave it for the next person oh. or you'll actually have bad luck. How about that bull crap? I didn't know about the flipping, the, the fli- rolling. It's a flip. It's <laughs> actually it's a flip or a roll because it's a circle. It's a because so it's a it perfect, could be either yeah, way. It could be either way. It's okay. a roll or, or a flip. It's, it's a, a yaw. It's a, <laughs> it's a third axis. It's the yaw, roll, oh, and pitch. Oh, shit, that's some funny crap. Because <clears throat> flip is pitch. Roll is yaw. No, roll is roll. <sighs> flip is pitch. Yaw, uh, yaw is this way. Yaw is around this axis. Uh, pitch, roll, and yaw. So roll is actually roll, which is the weirdest thing. You're it's kind of like head hurt, bro. Well, it's like, you know how blue is, is cyan and red is magenta in printing, but yellow is yellow. No, I wasn't aware of that yeah, either. Toner, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Does the printer guy have a lucky penny or not? He, I don't know. Maybe he might. I, he's got probably he's probably jingles pennies in pocket, but it's probably his keys. Okay, because he's probably got a janitor ring, like one of those things. Oh ones. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ralph Furley. Yes. Ja- Hi, Jack. That was almost no. Uh, Maybe. it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're just being nice. No, I for yeah. reals. Hi, Jack. That was probably a little bit better. I had to warm up. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Number seven. Oh, seven. 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 Oh, it could be bad luck. The lucky something. horseshoe. Number seven. Another object commonly thought to be lucky is the horseshoe. 
earliest origins of the horseshoe's function as a good luck charm reside in its volval shape. What the fuck? What the fuck does volval mean? Volvo? V U V V A L? V U L V A L. I got nothing. Volva. Like vulva. a vulva. That's something like what? Volval shape. Volvo. Yeah, but not like Volvo, like Volvo. Not like Volvo. And not Vovo, like V O V A, like the Vovo office. V U L V A L. Like, like Volvo. Seen upside down. I work. I work. I work. I work. Hi, everyone. It's story time. I worked at the Enterprise Rent a Car. Oops. <laughs> I worked at a place that had a green sign with white writing that read Enterprise Rent a Car on it. Oh. I did it again. Um, yeah. It was just a rental car company. It was not Enterprise. It's not where OJ worked. It's not the one where I had the accident. It's not anyone where anything. It was not them. Absolutely not them. But I di- And I also didn't work with a young woman who had a little bit of a speech impediment. And it was, she just had something when she spoke. And we actually had, an, is it Swedish? We had a Swedish car. Company car. Volvo is Swedish, yes. yeah. And she's like, hey, Mark, can you please pull the Volvo around? And I was like, I, is it, uh, yeah, I, I was like, the, the what? She's like, can you, can you please pull the Volvo around? I'm like, I, I'm supposed to pull the Volvo around? I, I was like, <laughs> the Volvo? Like, <sighs> it was so... I just it just it just hit me wrong because I wasn't even paying attention or something, but I heard Volva twice, and then she's like, "I'm sorry, I don't speak." So I was like, "I feel so bad." I felt bad, but that she said Volvo was pretty funny. I'm not gonna say the name, not even first name, but if you want, I can do it again. But it's Please. it was a horrible story. That was fucking amazing, balls, dude. The Volva. And so every once in a while, I'll make that joke. I'll be like, "Can I have the Volva? <laughs> Look, there's a Volva driving down the street." <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think I'm really nice and I like to really think I am. But sometimes I'm not. But oh I, my god, I did you read the rest of this fucking sentence? No. <laughs> Are you ready, dude? Oh god. About seven. We didn't even start yet. No, I yes, the lucky horseshoe, dude. Oh yeah. The earliest origins of the horseshoe's function as a good luck charm reside in its vulval shape seen upside down. And the invocation of the pagan moon goddess Diana and her sacred vulva. Yeah, that's why it was vulvin. I didn't get. I didn't. I'm an idiot. I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm not psychic on that I'm one, a, bro. I'm a. I'm a dipshit, dude. Vulva, vulvin shape. Vulval. It's V. <laughs> no vulva. It's like the car, but different, but with way worse seatbelts. Oh, there's no, <laughs> look, without, without birth control and without condoms, there's no safety measures. Oh, there's none of the safety measures. Oh, yeah, so okay. the horseshoe. And what about, is there something about turning it upside down? Or doing, as with pennies, oh, sorry, metal being seen as both valuable and magical, iron in particular, was thought by early Europeans as something capable of warding off evil spirits. And as with the Romans and the lucky number seven, horseshoes frequently featured seven nail holes. All right. Congratulations. Uh, yay me, bro. Are you feeling good now that you understand what a vulva is? Uh, well, you're, you're a middle I, I kind of knew what a vulva is you've because... Been around, you've been around them part of your life. Do you want to hear a story? Is is it time is is a stick of fury story time story or is it not? I'm not I don't we don't need to. If I told the dog story, the dog Volvo story, just do it. Okay, <laughs> do it. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't I mean we can story time it. There you go. One time. Oh shit! Sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm not. Ugh, fuck off. So I take my dog Roxy to the vet. Like Roxy, I don't know, s- s- fucking nine years ago, and I'm in the vet at the fucking vet with her and the crazy lady. She, her hair is all disheveled and she's got these fucking, she's obviously got like 19 cats at home, right? I only like people with heveled hair. I don't like Not people disheveled, with disheveled. Not just like heveled, yeah. Yeah, I don't like disheveled I like both. Hair. It's The bitch was crazy. I like heveled. She, uh, she had no makeup on. She was just like crazy. Eyes too? 
crazy cat lady doc, vet doctor, right? She, so she's like, oh, Roxy's doing great, this and that. Okay, um, has she been eating? Blah, 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 blah. She goes, do you know she has an inflamed vulva? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, bitch, I don't even know where that is. <laughs> I'm like, um, I come here. I wasn't checking it regularly, doctor. <laughs> like, what are you finger banging your dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, hello, Twitter world. I was not finger banging my dog ever. Oh my God. So, <laughs> why did I say that? I, now I have to edit it out, but <laughs> I can't. I'm not. I'm not going That's to. That's awesome. But, but it just reminds me of the South Park. I want to finger bang bang you. Oh, finger That's bang yeah, into yeah, my heart. Yeah. Yeah. No. Finger so bang, the lady said, Do you realize your dog's wolf was inflamed? And I'm like, <laughs> Bitch, I don't even know what that is on a dog. No, she like, said, Yeah, your dog is a bitch because it's a female <sighs> dog. So I was like, No. I'm like, I come here and I pay you. To fix the dog. If there's something's wrong, then fucking fix it. Fix like, it. give me a pill. Don't Not a narcotic. Like, give me some lotion or what, I'll tell her to take a bath, whatever the fuck. How do I uninflame my dog's right. vulva? So, of course, doctor. I tell all my friends this shit, and they go, dude, that's your new band name, Inflamed Vulva. <laughs> I think Roxy's Inflamed Vulva. Oh, uh, shit. That's a fucked up story, bro. <sighs> I'm I'm both that. so proud and sad that you shared that. Oh man, it's funny. No, it, it Inflame Volva. <laughs> and yeah, um Felicia do you was a, in the do band. You sad for that? Can I get home you can I get a homeopathic remedy? There has to yeah, be one. You Rub herb on it. Slurp right in there, man. Just get in there. Yeah, get get that ice cube slushing around. I can't I love you, man. Oh, did you hear that? No. The gulp. That one came. Through. I was way far away. It came. It came through so nicely. I can't. Wait. I'm sorry that I drank during the fucking podcast. I drink too. I make noise. You don't think I? You don't think I don't? You don't think I don't misophonia people? Anyway, bro, number eight. Oh shit! I forgot a horseshoe shit. The most famous story of a horseshoe bringing good luck, however, refers to the story of Saint Dunstan, who apparently worked as a blacksmith prior to attaining sainthood. The story goes that one day the devil rode into Dunstan's shop and requesting new shoes for his horse. Dunstan, recognizing the devil, played it off nonchalantly. And rather than nailing the shoes to the horse, nailed one to the devil's foot instead. In agony, the devil agreed never to enter a house with a horseshoe nailed above the door. If Dunstan would simply agree to remove the shoe... Huh. There you go. I wasn't aware that that's where the story came from. He's the fucking devil. He can't remove a goddamn shoe from his Apparently, fucking that's his, his foot. that's his kryptonite, bro. Okay. Okay. I thought God was his kryptonite. Uh, According yeah, to the bi uh, biblical stuff. Sure. Because like, God's like, not you, Lucifer. I just shine light on shit. Uh, <laughs> Good people, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 hey, thing. Hey, Saddam. Can we be friends? <laughs> this is a really South Park centric uh, type of show. Look, Satan, I'm with Chris now. You need to go. Come on, guys. Hey, guy, come on. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Okay, guys. <laughs> come on, hey, Satan, come on. Come on, Satan. You want to hang out with Satan, don't you? Come on. Okay. That's not terrible. It's, it, pretty, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty decent, it's right? It's pretty good, dude. Yeah, I, every once in a while I get it. Every once in a while I nail it. Like, I'll go through the three years. Oh, I kind of felt spot on. That one felt good. <laughs> the next one, yeah, we, we've got like a we're we're only partially in this man. I'm 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 all in though. I'm, Are you? I'm committed. Okay. Friday, committed. the thirteenth, yes. my friend. Like the number seven for Romans, magical significance has been attached to the number thirteen, especially if you're Taylor Swift. Yes. Sure. I don't T -Swizzle. know. T Swizzle, remember from last time? She. 13? Yeah, she goes, my album was when number one on the 13th. I was born on Friday oh, the 13th. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have 13 13th. stuff in my that's stuff. That's right. I totally forgot. That's how long ago T-Swizzle. So it was four weeks ago. I need to lay off the... Oh, I listened to it two days ago. That's what I'm so saying. I should, I should remember. Yeah. I should remember. You remember. I remember. But this time, it's unlucky rather than lucky. Oh, please feel free to point at me all you want. I want to see people... I want to see you point at me as this happens. Yeah. 
the number 12 <laughs> has frequently been seen as positive. 12 months of the year, 12 signs of the Zodiac, for example, or 12 days of Christmas, 12 tribes of Israel, naturally making its nearest neighboring number to the north negative. That's dumb. Well, also is thinking 12 is great. Like also other super tambourine, yes. two me, tambourines and um, some uh, cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> like other superstitions surrounding Last Supper, the 13th is also unlucky because, once again, the great betrayer du Judas. That I've had two Judas motherfuckers. Sorry, bro. First he spills the salt. Then he's some with the 13th. He was the 13th member of the dinner party that led to Christ's crucifixion. Dude couldn't catch a break. It actually That's reads funny. dude couldn't catch a break. In addition, how could he not catch a break? He's the fucking initiator of it. He broke. He didn't catch, not catch a break. He broke. Didn't Judas, wasn't he the breaker? Because he, he, yeah, he he's, was a bitch. He got paid 30 pieces of silver to yeah. betray Jesus. Yeah. What a, yeah. So it's not like he, he couldn't catch a break. It's like he did all this to himself, the son of a bitch. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> In addition, Friday 13th of October 1307, King Philip IV of France arrested and put to death hundreds of the Templar Knights. Who'd have thunk that? That's a crazy one. So also on a Friday the 13th, Templar Knights were killed. Well, that's not cool, man. Why? Because they got cool, like, suits of armor and stuff? Because that's not cool to be killing the Knights, dude. Knights of Columbus? Sure. But but uh, well, your dad's was in He was, yeah. So is Joe Biden, obviously. S yeah. I don't know. Is that a true statement? Or I do don't we know. Just, do we just lie I'm not going to beer Google about it. The president-elect who's going to be replaced. <laughs> do you want to hear something funny? I heard on Sirius XM today. Yes. Uh, they I were, do want to hear that. Uh, the metal god, the lead singer of Judas Priest, Rod Helfert, who's openly gay, had a crush on Sean Connery for many years and uh, often pleasured himself to a picture of Sean Connery. Did he share that at the... He like, shared it during a podcast, and then the DJ retold that story. During the obituary. No, it's not, like in his, he wrote the obituary. It's like, I wrote a eulogy. I love masturbating myself to a picture of Sean Connery. <laughs> He's a great individual. Oh, I really shit. enjoyed it, pleasuring myself every day. I could totally see myself doing that to him once. Just to try once. it. Once? To try it. Well, I mean, it might, I might like it. I haven't done it. So I don't know if I'd I'm like sorry, it. I'm sorry, But I could see trying it once. Shit. I mean, he's a handsome man. He's got the voice. You mother the baby. dog in Did <laughs> <laughs> oh, you tell me my zipper was down, bro? Miss Money Penny. I mean, it's pretty good. I have a pretty. It good is. Shot I just hear. I would. Oh, I hear that other shit. Uh, Jeopardy. Uh, your yeah. mother, Trebek. Your That's mother what I hear. Below me. <laughs> <laughs> Trebek. We meet again, Trebek. That was a great, that was a great skit. Yeah. Many kudos. So, sorry to see him go. Right. He was 90. Yeah, I know. Sad gorgeous, gorgeous estate. Saw a picture of it. I was like, damn, that was pretty awesome. And that was a weird beer Google's tangent. You're welcome. Please, I knew you needed Thank to you. hear about the Metal God and Sean Connery. I bro. think that was hot. That was yeah, totally was hot. Because like, you know. Uh, had everything to do with Friday the 13th. Right? It probably happened on Friday the 13th. Because the Templar suits of armor. Lone Star. Lone. Yes. Raspberry jam. No Lone. one uses raspberry. I can't breathe in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's your turn. Uh, You're next. Black cats. First of all, fuck cats. That's why I want to give you that one. You're such a dick. Though cats have often been associated with good luck rather than its opposite and were even worshipped as gods in ancient Egypt, which is dumb as shit, things took a turn for the worst for our dark-colored feline friends sometime around the Dark Ages when, in 1232 A.D. Anno Domine. Oh, ooh, you mean C.E. now, right? I don't fucking know, dude. Well, C.E. is common error. Have you heard this bullshit? Uh, yes. B.C.E. and C.E. now, uh -huh. which is stupid shit. So now it's C.E., whatever. In... 1232 A.D. or C. D. 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 in Checkmark's world, a papal bull by Pope Gregory the Ninth declared an incarnation of Satan, according to People People Magazine. We're quoting People Magazine. This is not good. Things only went downhill for black cats from there, 
with people of the Middle Ages burning them in bonfires on holy days like Shrove Tuesday, the first Sunday of Lent, and even Easter. And with the Puritans in America, connecting them to the practice of witchcraft. Also, the color black has long been associated with evil and death, which didn't help matters for our furry friends, who had the misfortune of being born the color of night and fuck cats. Back to you, Checkmark. Wow. It's witchcraft. Hey, now. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba. It's witchcraft. Hey. Yeah, witchcraft. So, sir, when you lie to me. Yeah. You do something. Don't you have like, isn't there like a thing that you do so that yes. you don't get in trouble for you? What do you do? I first ask, can I be honest with you? Oh, that's perfect. That's and then what you I say, do. no, fucking lie to me. <laughs> that's how I respond. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> now, fucking lie to me. Oh, ah. Give me five. Big give me five. Give me five. Give me five. I'm going to sound like Chris fucking Perman. That's hey, not how I hey, sound. Hey, 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 hey. No, you don't sound like that. I'm like, You're like, wow, what am no, I? No, lie to me, fucker. That's kind of how you sound, uh, but not exactly. I I'm sorry. Can you please repeat the question? Of all the voices I do. Yeah, that's Woods not. Woodsy's not. That's not Woodsy good, nor bro. Chris is a good one. No, so you, you lie to me, but like, so I don't get in trouble. Like, so it's okay to lie to me. Don't you do something with your body parts? Well, oh, excuse me? Have you ever heard this? Like. It's okay to lie as long as you... Oh, I uh, do something behind my back. Cross my fingers. Yes. Yes. That's what we do. You were spoon feed me there. I was trying to help you out. I was trying to... I, I, a little again, softball throw. Um, hello, Tudor. Someone does not communicate so well. That someone is me. Oh, I thought that was me. <laughs> no, it's myself because I do not uh, explain things very well. I'd need 42 ways and chances to do it. But fingers crossed. Western European, pagan, and Christian. So pagan. What? So it's pagan, because Christians are pagans. I mean, come on. That's where all the traditions came. From where? From, From which? Whence, hortz, henceforth to it. Uh, the this, aforementioned fingers crossed. Yes. The superstition of crossing one's fingers, bringing the lucky finger crosser good luck, comes from pre-Christian pagan times in Western Europe, when the practice of making a cross with your own and the index finger of another person was thought to concentrate the forces of good spirits hey. and to seal a pact or wish the fellow crosser. Let's do it, bro. Let's give each other a high high one. I think it's like a. I think you do it like perpendicular to each other, like you make a cross, like that. Oh, I think that's what he said. I thought we had to intertwine fingers. That's oh no, weird. I think it said. Uh, oh. Practice of making a cross oh. with your own and the index finger of another. Okay. So. Now, that's how we're going to high one going forward is we got to bring it into the thing. Okay, cool, man. <laughs> that was dumb. That kind of turned me on. But Stop my it. Oh, my, my nipples are getting hard. No, they're not. They are, man. Knock it off. Thanks for the touch. You have a gentle touch. Over time, people realize. Oh, God, yeah. They could. Do you want to take no, the rest please, of it? No, please, go. No, take it. No. Okay. It's yours. Over time, people realize they could simply bless their own wishes by crossing their first two Digits. Index fingers. Oh, and then later, simply the index and middle fingers of one hand, which is what we do today. Do you go middle over index? Yes. Because longer over shorter? I feel like that's why, because I can't bring Correct. it over. It's like crossing legs. I can cross one way, but I have a harder time crossing the other for some reason. Yes. Or like skating. I can only skate left. I can't left. skate. Because my left leg's shorter, so it's like the fulcrum's better to kind of like do Oh, like Yeah. It's like my, it's like I got a lower tire. So do a pirouette. Like I'm a deflated tire on one side by three quarters of an inch. <laughs> Another narrative of this uh, fingers crossed piece pins the practice on early Christians who would greet and identify one another in secret with various symbols like crossing index fingers, touching thumbs, etc. Though this explanation doesn't have the virtue of accounting for the association with good luck. How about that shit? How about that? I think this is the weirdest one that we're going to come across here. But was that a pretty good? How about that? Well, who, which, which baseball announcer sound? Uh, was that Euchre? No. Uh, well, not Harry Carey, Harry, right? It wasn't Harry Carey. Was How about that? Maybe it was Euchre. No. That's, I don't know. 
If the moon was made out of cheese, would, would you eat, eat it? it? I would. <laughs> I would. That was a pretty decent Will Ferrell impression. Harry Gary. That was pretty good. He, no, he he did it. I just impersonated him. It's weird. I can't impersonate the person directly. I can only impersonate. The I can do some Jay. I can do some Jay Farrow voices, but only impersonations of Jay Farrow's impersonations of the person. So it's like a copy of a copy. I don't know who Jay Jay Farrell is. Jay Jay Farrow is um, African American gentleman from Saturday Night Live who did who does the Stephen A. Smith impression, and he does the Charles Barkley impression. That's terrible. And the Shannon Sharp impression, it's pretty good. Will Smith, he does a good Will Smith. Kevin Hart. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Anyway, moving on. Why why, why, why are you guys falling asleep? Oh, this, what? This guy's funny. I, okay. I will share him with you. Okay. It's your turn. Chewing gum at night. Who knew? Uh, this one's weird to me because I never heard this before. Have you ever... This is fucking crazy. Have you ever had the irrational fear... Of accidentally consuming dead flesh all the time. I have that fear all the time. Yeah, like oh accidentally, like there's a finger in my taco from Taco Bell. Oh, isn't that the worst? Chicken feet and shit. Well, in Turkey, it is a thought that after dark, chewing gum is magically transformed. Like the mogwai in the movie Gremlins, <laughs> who turn into titular monsters. If they eat after midnight into the flesh of the dead. <coughs> the flesh of the dead. <laughs> does it actually read Magwai? It I, does. Okay, I, I didn't like want to read Like the Magwai in the movie Gremlins. Oh my God. Who, in, who turn into the titular monsters. Whatever the fuck that That's means. when you feed them after midnight, right? Yes. Dro- drop it in the pool, multiplies them. That's all. Uh, right. Water does, yes, right. sir. Right, well, yeah. Well, dro- yes, water multiplies them. But feeding after midnight is the chewing the gum of the old days, the olden times. Yes. That's so weird. Okay, so tell me more. That's all it more? says, bro. What? Don't chew gum so it's, after midnight. It's Don't like chewing put your flesh? mogwai in water. That's it. Weird. Yeah, like what the hell? Have you ever seen the movie I Am Number Four? Yes. I kind of liked it. I, I don't I remember it, it that well. I think I have it. Well, don't they like sometimes. like they're youngsters with superpowers? Or yeah, something? They, have, they have abilities. Yeah, and they're on the run, and I think they were numbered like one, two, three, and four. Man on the and run. I don't know if it was just four or eight of them or nine of them or something. I think it might have been nine or some number, and 13? he was number four. The, no, 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 nineteen, <laughs> nine, 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 eighteen, uh, in this case. So in China, yeah, the number four, yeah, is bad luck. What? Yeah, who to thunk? I don't not me. It's weird. As we've seen with numbers like 13 and 7, numbers are frequently assigned different magical significance or status depending on the culture in question. For the Chinese, the number 4 is a no-no due to the similarity in its pronunciation in Chinese to the oh. word for death. Wow, how about that shit? How about that? How about that? So 4 is the pronunciation. I'd love to hear it now. I wish I had some skill to do that while we're live, but I don't. So please continue. I'd like to pull it up on something and then play it. Uh, yeah, on the beer Googles. Yeah, I'll have to do that sometime. I, I Two Tambian. Yeah, I just This know. one's weird, dude. Okay. Number 13, writing love letters to Juliet Capulet. What? What? Is, In what? Shakespeare's Romeo Who? and Juliet. Go ahead. Who? What? What? What a great audience. Well, I'm confused because who the fuck's doing that in any, like, there's no need to be luck involved. Like, I don't write, who writes letters to Julia Capulet? Luck be a lady tonight. tonight. Anything else? No, no, please. <laughs> in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, a male member of the doomed pair of lovers was known to frequent the foot of Juliet's balcony in order to send up his nightly entreaties what the fuck does that mean and missives of love at the Casa de Giulietta in Verona, Italy where the Capuletti family supposedly lived at Via Capuletto 23 visitors can write their own love letters too and even rub the right breast what of the nearby statue of no Juliet not the left breast only the right breast. What the fucker? Fucker brains out. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god! 
This is all done in hopes of earning her favor, like the Romeo of long ago, like even Volva? if the pair themselves were not so lucky. The bitch wasn't even real. Like the Volva? <laughs> like the horseshoe? Oh or, my or, God, dude. or are you going to break your baba's back with your crack? Next. I, Next. I, didn't, I didn't know you could only t- fondle one breast. Is it because it's out of reach or is it around I, the corner? Is it like just. Yes, both. Maybe it's like you can't get, you don't have access to the left breast, and that's why you can only touch the right. It might be against the wall at a corner, and you can't even get up in there. Or it got chopped off because it's because it is it like five, is it a five hundred year old statue? It could be and a only one millennia boob, statue. Only many one boob remains. And possibly well, true. Romeo and Juliet was oh, was written four hundred years ago. Yeah, four hundred. So right. it could have fell off in eighteen forty four. We don't know. Yeah. Or know. stolen, you know. I'm wondering. We need to delve deeper in that one. To the beer Googles. Yes. Um, yeah. So the next one I, that I have is the curse of the evil eye. Yeah. Give, give me your evil eye, bro. Give, show, show, show the audience. Damn, that's scary. That's beautiful, man. It's a common belief spanning. Oh, the Mediterranean and Middle East. Totally get that. How many have you seen friendly eyes? You see evil eyes in the Middle East for some reason. It's kind of hey. reminds me of Team America. Like, durga, durga. America. Jihad, 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 jihad. Durga, durga. Infidel. Or Muhammad something. Ali. It's Durga, Durga, Whoa. Muhammad Ali. It's That's true. I totally forgot the script. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, in the Mediterranean, Middle East. It's a common belief spanning the Mediterranean, Middle East, and South Asia. That's been held for thousands of years that to achieve too much success would be to invite the anger or inspire the envy of the gods who would then smite the unfortunate individual with a reversal of fortune. In response to the fear of this curse, people across the ancient Mediterranean began fashioning amulets and beads with an image of an evil eye, sometimes referred to as Nazars which would help ward off that horrible, untoward fate. What's interesting about that is, I wonder if it comes off the, like the Eye of Ra. Like what, oh, where? I dig that. I where dig would that. they, where did the, what did the evil eye, how did, what's the entomology of that? Just the significance of that symbol. And I'm wondering if that comes from Egyptian time even with like the Eye of Ra because Inspire the, eye of Ra was the envy a god. of the gods. Right, which could have, yeah, absolutely, could have been Egyptian. It could have been Egyptian that they that that eye was the protector because people yeah. associate Horus with Ra, with the eye of Ra. Yes, was well, the eye of Ra, and then Horus's had his own eye. I think Horus's eye because he had the squirrely thing for the infinite. It's squirrely there's whole, thing. There's a lot of symbology in that. We should totally do a hieroglyphics podcast episode. Okay. I keep saying shit, and then we're never gonna do it because like we need, somebody needs to write it down. Yeah, and then. Yeah, I, I need. To, okay, I think it's your turn. I think you need to get that camera off me, bro. Thank you. I don't know any of these, dude. Tucking thumbs in inside of a cemetery. I've never heard of that one either. Japan, like the fear huh. of the word "four" in China, hinging on the similarity in its pronunciation to the Chinese word for death. The Japanese similarity tuck in their thumbs when in a cemetery visiting the graves of dead relatives. This comes from the connection between the Japanese word for thumb and its meaning as the parent finger. To tuck in one's thumb in inside a cemetery then is to, to protect one's parents from death. That's freaking weird. That is a weird one. So I got nothing. I got nothing either. I got less than nothing. I've got less you than got zero. You got negative stuff, bro? No, I've got less than zero with Jamie Gertz. Oh, yes. And with Robert Downey Jr. And with Andrew McCarthy. Yes. And with James Spader. He's amazing, isn't he? Spader? He's yeah. a creepy fucker. Have you watched uh, the Black Black Show? Blacklist? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And he's a creepy fucker. He's a creeper. He's a creepazoid. He should have an unmarked van with he's the word free candy spray painted across the side. He, he, but he, I mean, he, it's a good character that he plays. But even in Less Than Zero, he's like smarmy, you know? The you know. Yeah. Hey. He's a drug dealer. Yeah, and, and he's just a dick. What I liked him in, my favorite role was in Stargate, actually. 
If yeah, he was honest, good in that. The movie because he he was he seemed like likable. He was yeah, likable in that. Yeah, he was the doctor I liked guy, him in the that. hieroglyphics. He too. didn't seem creepy. Yeah. He seemed like a cool, normal, like a nerdy guy. Yeah, but like li he was likable, and I found that I found that engaging. Not too much of his other. Uh, usually, his other roles are pretty like creepy. Creepy. Yeah. It's weird. Kind of like not to tangent too much, too not too tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Michael Keaton has like a lot of dichotomy, like Pacific Heights, and he plays that creeper, and he's like scary bad guy. Yeah. And he's got it in him. Like yeah. I think that's why Batman worked for him actually, because he had kind of like so the two sided. Yeah. Because he could be both that character and the bruce wayne character yeah um but uh michael keaton's one of those special actors that like play he can play super creep or not like, super freak super likable like gung-ho mr mom yes multiplicity i mean come on and then yeah. you've got pacific heights he's scary and even in founder he's a little bit creep he's a little creepy well, yeah because he you know yeah. the guy was a little creepazoid a little bit yeah we well, had to play the character right yeah which is interesting so true he's just good at it so he's a good actor. I liked him in uh, the one Tarantino movie, Foxy, Foxy Cleopatra. No, Foxy Brown or whatever. Uh, uh, was the one? Jackie Brown. Jackie oh, okay. Brown. I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, he played an FBI agent. Very small role in it, but it kind of resurged his career, res like his oh, career okay. resurgence. Gotcha. There was a career resurgence after that. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway, um, what, what what else would you like to add to everything? Uh, talk for a bit, man. Share, share a story. Share a story about how I tuck my thumbs in when I go to the cemetery. I don't, sure. I don't, I don't do that. Seems weird. It seems fucking weird. Like, nor do so I shy away from do the. You, do you do it this way, or do you just do it? You have to surround them, correct? I would think so. Do you gonna? You can you show the audience? Is that how you do it? Tuck, tuck it, them in. Tuck it, bro. So tuck when it. you go into a cemetery, you have to do this. If you're in Japan, that's correct. That's interesting. That's fucking. I wonder weird, if they bro. still do it. Uh, well, shit, it says right here on the cyber web. According to the beer Googles, that's what it says. The Japanese you, people. Oh. You can't say number four, also Tambian in China. So. Tuck nope. your thumbs. Five. Yes. High four. No. Oh, you can't say four Bro, either. Oh, God. Shit. High Darn three. It. God damn it. Oh, sorry. I said five already. Oh, shit. All right. How about this one? <laughs> I, I don't know this one either. It's a Russian one. Oh, uh. That's up your category there, checkmark. Guess who's going to share Yay! this one now? You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Checkmark on the scene. Check d d d d d d this just in from those Russia. One of these superstitions is giving yellow flowers. Like numbers, colors have frequently been assigned symbolic significance. Like black being seen as the color of bad luck and red the color of passion in russia which is not czech republic by the way yellow flowers in particular are seen as problematic as they are thought to represent infidelity uh -oh. separation or even death they are not for to looking for yellow flowers please have you ever given yellow flowers check mark i have given yes i've given yellow rose to someone from texas i thought <laughs> i thought that was a I thought that was a really awesome thing to give someone on a date. Did you? Uh, Don't wouldn't you agree? Did you ever receive yellow flowers? I'm awful. No. Well, probably all the time. Symbol. I mean, literally I or figuratively. Eyes. I just get the evil eye. I get stink. Oh, face you get something. this. No. You get the stink eye. Have I? I've shared that already. Is like where I've given flowers to people and people were offended by it, and then I didn't do it the next time when they would have actually appreciated it. I share that thing. Oh, it doesn't what? Uh, when I when in my old dating life, I was like a. I think it was during our courtesy respect episode. Um, I don't think you ever mentioned when you gave flowers. Oh, I I I like giving flowers on a first date. I thought that was a nice thing to do. I just it was like a traditiony kind of thing, and I liked it. I thought it was nice. Yeah. And I've I gave flowers to someone once, and they were like. Ugh. They're like offended. That's weird. Like, I don't know. I just thought that was a nice thing. I know it was old school, but I'm a little old school sometimes. I, I'm happy with my old schoolness. I, I agree. You know, I still open I open the car door for Megzi every possible chance I can. Every time. There have been like a few times where I haven't where it's been more like I'm putting a cart back at a store 
or something and she gets her own. But I open the door for her as much as possible. It's a lost, it's a lost, it's a lost cordial thing. Art. Yeah. It's a lost courtesy. It's just a lost courtesy. I don't want to call it an art. Cause like, it's not like you don't have to be an artist to do it. You know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, not like it's, a skill. Yeah, 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 of Fucking, it's not a skill. You just open the door for her first. Oh, that's, it's rough right there, dude. Yeah. If you, you know, not asking for anything more than that. Of course. Is there bowling on? There's bowling on, bro. <laughs> this is beautiful, man. <laughs> I'm like, did I and just see And he's wearing bowling? a golf glove. <laughs> oh, man. I got it. I, I need to go. I have to go. Ow. Okay, so you're next, sir. All right, number 17, bro. Sweeping feet. Don't know what that means. I don't even know what that means, bro. Oh, you think I fucking know? If you happen to be on a cleaning spree in Brazil... If you want to steer clear of bedrooms, you will want to steer clear of bedrooms, or at least be careful. South Americans believe that if you, let me start over. South Americans believe that <laughs> if your feet are swept over by a broom, you will remain single for the rest of your life. The curse can be broken if you immediately spit on the broom. Patui! The exact origins of this superstition are unknown. But legend has it that a woman who cannot keep house does not a good wife make. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. Go from my personal point of view. Get an ugly girl to marry you. Man, I saw your wife the other day. Man, is she ugly, but she sure can cook, man. That's a song that was in the 60s, bro. U-G-L-Y, you ain't got no alibi, you ugly. ugly. What, what, you, you ugly. ugly. <laughs> um, yeah, if Yo you want to be happy. So ugly. What if you had bad aim? What if you What if you missed? What if you're like, oh, oh shit. And, I, and then you ran out of spittle. Oh, you had to reload, no, you got dry mouth and, the, and shit. And the broom kept going. Like, oh, it, no. Because the person pushing it. Or 74 whatever. years back. You better get some horseshoes, bro. You'll be single for the rest of your fucking oh, life. Unless no. you can spit directly on that broom. Patui. Damn. That's some weird a, shit, dude. That's a weird one. Because you can't. But why over your feet? What? And then you think, like, that's. Stupid that's, shit. You're cleaning your feet. I bet you the top of your feet were pretty fucking dirty, too, back then. Damn it. Uh, I would concur, sir. I don't know, man. All right, well, I've got one more, but I think there's a couple more somewhere we could find if you want to scour the other web. You want me to look pages. on the other? The other sure, page. take a look. Why not? Because, sure you know, what the fuck? Right? Everyone's, Go. Everyone wants to hear more. So this one's Itchy Palms. What? I remember Itchy Palms is like, I thought also ringing ear was like someone's thinking about you, like your ears ring. Oh, like, yeah. Or burn. Or ears, ears were burning. burning. Ears were burning. I thought Itchy Palms was something like that, too. But yeah. this comes from the Caribbean. Okay. I mean... The Caribbean? No. Only if it were Pirates of. But it is The not. Caribbean. It's Caribbean. Okay. It's the Caribbean. Yeah. But Itchy Palms, I, I wonder if that's like a voodoo-y kind of thing. Okay. I guess we'll find out. Let, let's let's find out. One, two, three. Three. Depending which palm of yours begins to itch, you may find yourself in the Caribbean <laughs> <laughs> with a bit of extra spending money or in the red. It is a common belief that an itchy left palm means you will owe money soon. Whereas an itchy right palm means money is coming your way. There is an expl explanation that might tell us why such a distinction. The left hand seems to hold passive energy and the right hand active energy, which symbolically blah, 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 symbolically could explain the coming in and out of money. Hey now. Hey now, Hank Kingsley. <laughs> Did you find anything? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Which one? Which anything one else you know? to add on that, sir? N no, I'd like you to add because I'm done. Get the video off me. I'm <laughs> fucking disgusted. <laughs> oh, shit. It's bad luck to open an umbrella indoors. Though some historians tentatively trace this belief back to ancient Egyptian times, the superstitions that surround Pharaoh's sun shades were actually quite different and probably unrelated to modern-day one about rain gear. 
Most historians think the warning against unfurling umbrellas inside originated more recently in Victoria, England. In 18th century London, when metal spoked waterproof umbrellas began to become a common rainy day sight, their stiff, clumsy spring mechanism made them veritable hazards to open indoors. A rigidly spoked umbrella opened suddenly in a small room could seriously injure an adult or a child or shatter a fragile object. What? Dun, 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 dun. I always remember that. Dun, what about dun. also like hat? Wasn't wasn't there one about hats? When you're crossing a threshold of the home, you'd have to take it off when you come in. Well, or was that just a courtesy? Th- I thought that was a courtesy. luck thing as well, no, though. Not that I know. Of. I think it started as a luck thing, and then it became like kind of That's a tradition, possible, yeah. Kind of thing. Maybe. That's cool. And how about this one? Do you remember? Do you remember this one? Like, you if you needed luck, you needed to pick something out out of the field. Uh, I don't. I don't know that. It's one green. Yet. Oh, yeah, four-leaf clover. Yeah, bro. Dude, I totally forgot about the four-leaf clover. Yeah. The odds of finding a four-leaf clover are purposely one in 10,000, making what? them exceedingly rare finds. I found a couple in my day. Have what? you ever found them? No, a- I have not. Never? Never? Oh, not one time, totally dude. Cool. Not one time. Really? Not dude, in 10,000? Dude, not one time. That was not kind of the audience, man. Oh, sorry. Not one time. Yeah, not thank you. Much, at least that's much more accurate. Because you don't, you've, well, you don't want to, yeah. Anyway. As the legend goes, when Eve learned that she was expelled from paradise, she took a four leaf clover with, with, in order, oh, she took one with her in order that she'd never forget the Garden of Eden. Now, four leaf oh. clovers are symbolic luck of and prosperity. How about that? How about that? That's an interesting luck one. And prosperity. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Luck it, be a lady again tonight. Sir. Yes. Do you have another one? Always, God bless, a sneeze. In most English-speaking countries, it's polite to respond to another person's sneeze by saying, God bless you. Though incar- incantations of good luck. Carnitas? Incarnitas? Mm, though incarnitas <laughs> of good luck have accompanied. <laughs> Can you say the actual word? Because now I'm confused. The incantations? Incantations okay. of good luck and also carne asada of good luck have accompanied sneezes across disparate cultures for thousands of years, all largely tied to the belief that sneezes expel evil spirits. Our particular custom began in the 6th century AD or CBDBDBDBD for checkmark by the explicit order of Pope Gregory the Great. Aha! Sorry. Uh, you just clipped the mic, bro. A terrible pestilence was spreading through Italy at the time. Pestilence. Pestilence. The pestilence. The first symptom was severe chronic sneezing, and this was often quickly followed by death. Pope Gregory urged the healthy to pray for the sick and ordered that light hearted responses to sneeze such as may you enjoy good health be replaced by the more urgent god bless you and there you go don't lose don't lose your spirit sneezing bro bro it's funny oh how many sneezes for you every time it's like a uh no it's different every time. okay between two to f- f- five i used to be a two sneezer oh absolutely two sneezer i'm on i'm on three four I'm up to like four, sometimes five. I used to be a steady two sneezer. One to kind of get the first one jarred, second one knock it out. Now I feel like I'm getting old because I need extra sneezes to get that gunk all out of there. Extra so <laughs> because like it's almost like the eth- efficacy efficacy of my initial sneezes are insufficient. And and therefore hence to fort with Warrant a third, fourth. Hence to fourth with? Fort with, yes. Hence hence to fourth with, possibly warrant a third, fourth, nay, a fifth sneeze. Nay. <laughs> this is inconscionable. Inconceivable. Inconceivable. Did you know that? When pa- death is on the line. <laughs> Did you know the Ptolemy? Who? Ptolemy. 
<laughs> it's like pterodactyl, but totally it's different. It's pterodactyl. But no, none of the other stuff. Pterodactyl <laughs> Ptolemy, a uh, Greek astronomer. He theorized that the presence of shooting stars meant the gods were peering down from the sky and open to granting our wishes. According to Ptolemy, which is probably Ptolemy, which is Pterodactylemy, the gods had to open up the space that divides the earth sky from the divine sphere in order to watch over humanity. That's an interesting theory. It is. Fuck. Think about that. Yes. The Greeks. This is B this is B C E. Right? This is B C. This is prior. This, this is, is this is over two thousand years ago. Yes. A very long time ago. Yeah. Very long. Yeah, very. These guys had like theories like the gods had to open up the space that divides the earth sky from the divine sphere. Like these guys thought about fucking a lot of crazy shit. But they were so ahead in, you know, the, I don't know, that age of philosophy or whatever. Like, to be a fly in the wall. Like, if you go back in time. Go back in time. <laughs> to listen, like, pl you know, Plato's or Socrates. Whoa. And, and, and Ptolemy, which is pterodactyly, actually. Pterodactyly? Tol Ptolemy. Ptolemy. Anyway, shooting stars were wont to slip through the Great Divider. So if you saw one blazing through the night sky, you knew the gods were watching and listening to you. That's just an interesting theory. You have any more, sir? Whoa. Yeah, that was a good one. I'm looking, bro. You're looking. I think we're done because that's the last uh, site. Yeah, knock on wood. They talk about that with the crosses again. Ooh, that sneeze picture. It's pretty gross, huh? Ooh, that is disgusting. It's a lot of COVID up in there, bro. Bro. Totally. Yeah, we're done. I think we're good. So uh, what else we got going on? Anything? Anything? Uh, my iPad's being stupid, bro. Okay. What? Well, Again. It's, it's really not a stupid thing. It just is. You know. Should I get a Should I get a Samsung pad? What's their thing? Tab A. <laughs> tab. Tab. Is it T A B apostrophe? T A B space capital A. Oh. Tab. I, I have one a. actually downstairs. Yeah. How's it working out? For I got you? it. I got it on Prime Day for 180 smackaroonies. Wow, that's a good deal, bro. Yeah, it's a good deal, and it works pretty nicely. It's I don't I use it for like my Traeger's grill. Oh, okay. And some things like that, and I've got some apps on it, like the Flicks and the Hools and the The Flicks and the, the Hulus. Yeah, and the Vids. The <laughs> you know the standards, but uh, they're they're pretty good, man. What okay. about you? What um, do you what do you got? So right now it is a twenty it is a twenty ninth. Tell me about your Thanksgiving, because did you do anything? I uh, went over to my adopted parents' house, Steve and Felicia. And, uh, hi, my, Felicia. Hi, Felicia. Um, I'm waving at the camera, but it's not on, so, but I'm waving at you. So, there you go. Wave, hi, Felicia. I don't okay, know if go she's, back. I don't know if she's going to YouTube. Bye. Hi, Felicia. It doesn't. Yeah, but we're uh, going to we'll say hi anyway. I went over to Steve and Felicia's and he smoked a turkey. And, uh, how did, how did he get it in the wrapper? Like the roller? Did he roll it, was it up huge, before dude. he it was smoked huge, it? It was a huge wrapper. Did bro. Snoop Dogg come over and like, he rolled it? It was like super joint, dude. Wonder joint. Just, did he just do like one leg at a time? He smoked yes. one. Like, yeah, the wings were delicious, dude. The wings were a good smoky. And she made, wait for it, ten pounds of cornbread stuffing. It was excessive uh, for three people. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. How much do you have in your fridge? And uh, why didn't you bring eight pounds over? <laughs> Cause carbs, bro. Yeah, you didn't bring it over. You, thanks, thanks, Felicia. <sighs> I'm sorry, dude. Thanks for they put most of it in their insane. fridge, and hey, I, I think a little. Can you give Checkmark, Deutschmark, Watermark, and Plain Old Mark some some stuffing? See, she she made enough. She did for all the marks. All four of them. Right. She just she just didn't give it to you to give to the marks. Checkmark. Will I, I I could have. I just stuffing. didn't think that's my. I apologize. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry. Look, be a lady. You know what's tonight? great about this? I I love you, man. I know. Forgiven You're and so forgotten. Oh. I don't even remember what the fuck happened. So yeah, it was a nice thing. That? No, that's really awesome. Just three of us. That's cool. So ha, smoke, turkey, smoke cigars outside after. Like, tell me about the smoker. Was it a Traeger or was it like uh, a wood Steve pellet? Steve has or like his a, own a, pellet. Egg? Pellet. Thingy. He's got a pellet one. Okay, yeah. yeah so I have a yeah. pellet one. I love that thing, yeah. man. I'm and really he's been using it. it for a couple years, and he does. He's nuts, dude. He's in a good way, like briskets yeah. and ribs. I've known briskets, yeah. Dude, done, he's, the guy's a rock star. That's why, yeah, that's yeah. the next briskets, one of them. But we did a rib roast and some other prime rib 
roast and uh, it's good. Hell pork yeah. tenderloin. Oh yeah, super juicy. Juicy. Uh, French dip. We made French dip with the uh, eye round, round eye, whatever roast. Anyway, so that that was it, man. We had superstitions. These were fun because obviously we shared our celebrity superstitions. And yeah, they were crazy. Do you want to do a uh, personal superstitions podcast sometime? I do asked, you, and you no don't, one has. You any. don't have any. No, I mean, I, I have a couple, but yeah, we'll I, share I, them now. I could, I could just do the survey, and if anybody has them, share them now. Uh, share them now, and what what we'll do is we'll say we'll ask for people to DM us or something. Okay. Their superstitions, and we'll share it then. But no, share yours. Go. Uh, for a while, like twenty five years ago, I uh, I always put my left shoe and left sock and left motorcycle glove on first, and if I didn't put my left motorcycle glove on first, I thought something bad was going to happen to me. So now it's just the way I do it. And I, and then after like I was tw- in my twenties. So now I'm like, that's, f- that's stupid. What did that means? Nothing, but I still do that. I still put my left glove on first, but it doesn't, I understand that that means that has no say on my fate, but it, I did think that. But there's there's a thing about luck and routine, right? Because like sure, like I've I've mentioned I think when we talked about the celebrity one, I remember myself saying something about uh, to the fact that it's like in the morning, I do everything in a specific order. Yeah, and but it's not as much superstition as it is if I miss a step, it could cause me to miss another step in relation to the fir- to the first misstep. Yeah. So like me not brushing my teeth. Before I put on my shoes, for example, or whatever, but yeah. before I put on my clothes or something, coming out of the shower with just a towel or something. Yeah, that's right. You want to go just bowling a, sometime? Just a towel. Now I'm really enticed to watch people bowling in masks. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Mask bowling. In COVID world. It's like, I don't even know who you are. Like, like you could recognize a bowler anyway. Now they're masked. This is this has got to be the worst thing for bowling because they're not recognizable in the first place. Well, if you like bowling, you you would oh, know these he people, it right? Down, that son of a bitch is he allowed to pull it down? These guys are cheering with their masks on. Take that mask off. Oh bro. yeah, throw that bowling ball, boy. Oh, that was got the hair. I love it when it gets all froey. <laughs> I don't know why you still have the video on me, but because anyway. you're beautiful, bro. Um, what were we talking superstitions about? superstitions? And you can't brush your teeth. Oh yeah, after you put your shoes on, because then I'll just I'll forget my keys or forget to close the garage door. Some weird thing. It's just out of the routine of the whole thing. It just throws it off. That's weird, bro. That's why I think like that. What's his name? Uh, Garcia Para. The no more. Fucking, yeah, Garcia this Para. craziness. Yeah, is all routine stuff. It's like not as much superstitiony. It's not like it's bad luck. I had the one where it was like if my mom didn't tell me to drive safely, I get in an accident. That's fucking weird. Like leaving the house or something. Yeah, that and that means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. So, but it crossed my mind. It was like she didn't say it. I had an accident one time. I was like, wow. Correlated the two, and it was like weird. So, yeah, humans do weird stuff with. Well, of course we all do weird stuff. Like people that, oh, I wear my favorite Chiefs uniform on game day because it's going to help the team. Means absolutely nothing. I mean, that's cool. I love I love little traditions and rituals like that. I love that. You know, I, I used to love getting up and watching game day every Saturday and making coffee, and I love that kind of shit. But that's the what clothing it, that I wear is going to affect my team that's playing 2,000 miles away, that's garbage, bro. Yeah. Where's my lucky shorts? Like how, Dude, <sighs> that's not, no. Uh, no, you can keep it on you. It's fine. Um, how many times do you yell at the TV? Run, run. Like it he- <sighs> Like the guys, like first of all, the person is hearing you. And secondly, they're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I do know what you we mean. We do, or when we clap at a tele, or at a mo- when we clap in a movie theater. Hey, I Bro, do that. Shut up. I can laugh because laughter is just a an expression of like hilarity. Yes. Clapping in a movie theater, bro. At the end when it's a good movie, you don't clap? N- fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Look. That's a great I superstition. May, I may. You I'm know what I'm going to start doing? Clapping at the end of every podcast. That's right. As I, meet, as I mute us. No, look, clapping, clapping in a movie theater is nonsense. <sighs> nonsense. Oh, man. I don't understand why I think it's nonsense. It just feels like nonsense to me. I'm not right. Come on. You, you and I have both admitted that our views are 
sometimes askew from others. In oh, of this course. case, my views even askew from yours. A lot of times our views are askew in the same direction. In this case, they're just not. That used to be a thing, though. It was very, very was. common to, to clap, clap at, the, at end, the end of a movie at the that end was of ET, good. Star Wars, yeah. Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I remember everyone clapping because right. they're cheering for because you, you know, beat the, the Empire. Yeah, it was the end. Yeah, until six, six until more movies. Came. Yeah, but anyway, and now nobody does that. So I like to do it because it reminds me of you know older times. So that's why I do it when I, you know, when we used to have pre-COVID movies and stuff. I wonder how that tradition started. I wonder if it actually because the shit was live. Clapping your... Oh. And it was actually an audience. It, it was, was meant, probably like a play. it was a stage thing or a play, right? Yes, correct. So you would think that would be... that. They, that's what carried over is during the bow. That, the, 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 the credits are the curtain call in a way. I would think that you are absolutely correct. It's just sir. a weird, weird thing. I we think probably look up traditions of traditions. What? Origins of traditions of... Why did they clap during a movie? Because it was good, bro. And next time, I think we should do the origins of origins. Okay. How about the origins of oranges? Uh, what if you have the origins when you can smell oranges? But you can't spell You them. can't spell <laughs> Then you're having a stroke. Well, like right now. Along with burnt toast. Yes. And I think on that, we should probably- We should wrap it up, bro. We should wrap it up. Well, this has been another Beer Googles. Double E. Double O. Double G. Please rate, subscribe, download, leave a comment on- the Podbean and the iTunes and uh, the Spotify's and what else? I forgot some shit. Um, we're on all platforms. All of them. All of them. And if you go, we have link trees now set up. You just go on link tr.ee and then slash beer googles. That's B double E R G double O double G L E S. So B E E R G O O G G L E S. So, you know, Google with an extra G because it's like goggle and goggle with an extra Beer O. Beer Googles. It's Google with an extra G and goggle with an extra O. Yeah. That's exactly what it really Hells is. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. And if you can't figure that out, it's once again, it's my Chris's poor fault. communication skills. Totally, totally all my fault. No, I it's have horrible all, communication this skills, guy. sir. What's not? But um, we thank you for again for checking us out, listening to us. Subscribe, rate, review, please. We love to hear from you. We love we're we're gaining a little bit of an audience here. We love tell us what superstitions you have. Yeah, for reals. Tweets us. Tweet at Woodsy the Owl or at Knocked Con. Okay. Not con, okay. And I would do not conscious, but it's sixteen letters it's and it only long, does fifteen. Bro. The twits only lets you do fifteen. I just need one le- one more letter, bro. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, um, sir, do you happen to have any final thoughts, bro? Yeah. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes.